Hello, my name is Wes Bam, and welcome to another very meaningful VVV tutorial. In this lesson, I want to introduce you to a very handy group of nodes. It's the spectral group. Now I just double left click on the patch, like I was making a new node. And now instead of typing a node, I'm going to right click. And here you see all the node groups. Now I can either scroll here, or I can uh, move my mouse wheel to scroll down, like so. Or I can hit the S on my keyboard to go to the S section on the bottom here. And if I keep on pressing the S key, I will see spectral. If I left click here, I open up the spectral group. And here we have all the nodes that are labeled spectral. Okay, the spectral nodes. Well, these nodes are used to extract information about the spreads you have. In previous lessons I showed you how to combine multiple spreads and get some information. The spectral group will give you information about one spread. Let's make the node bounce spectral. We are not going to use the spectral vector group. It comes with the plugin pack and it's, uh, it's made for vectors like uh, XYZ values. Okay, the bounce spectral. The bounce node will give us some cool information about our spread. And to show that, I first need to make a spread. And for now, I make a circular spread. So I double left click and type in circular spreads. Since this spread has an X output and a Y output, we are only going to deal with the X output today. So I'm going to connect the X output pin to the bounce node. Now, let me show you a cool trick. If you right click on an output pin, you're going to make a connection. Well, we got nothing to connect this output pin to, but if I now middle mouse click, it will create an IOBOX value advanced for me. And this is pretty cool, but uh, let's make it even cooler. If I middle mouse click again, it copies the name from the pin over here. Oh, the center pin, center. I right click, middle click, middle click. Right click, middle click, middle click. And if I make an IOBOX value advanced the old way, I double right click, move my mouse away, and I then connect it to the bounce node, to the last pin, the maximum pin. And when I now hover above this IO box and I hit the middle mouse key, it uh, also gets the name of the pin it's connected to. This is a pretty cool trick, it's pretty new, and it's pretty handy, so I thought I'd show you. Okay, you might see now that all the values are the same, except for the width. Well, that's because we only got one slice in our spread. When I crank up the spread count to something very high, so I double right click and I type in, I don't know, 10,000 and hit the enter key, I now got a center of zero, a width of one, and that's exactly how my circular spread is set up. So the input x is zero and the width is one. So that's pretty cool. And that's exactly what the bounce does. It takes a spread and calculates its center point, its width, its lowest value, and its highest value. And if I hover above the pin, you can see we have only one value, and this is not a spread. So the bounce does not output a spread. It outputs one value, which is calculated from the input. And if you want to know the average of this spread, there's another node, and that node is called mean spectral. I double left click, ty type in mean, pick spectral and I connect it to the same pin. I right click, middle click, middle click. And the average value of this spread is zero. And I think that's correct because we got 10,000 slices. The weird value you see when hovering above the pin is because of VVV's internal rounding. So don't worry about it. Okay, let's move this all aside. And I'm going to show you a bit about uh, other spectral nodes in VVV. Let me make a transform 2D, a quad, and if I middle mouse click on the output pin, I get a group, and if I middle mouse click again, I get a renderer. Now let's move this all aside. And for the love of VVV, let's make a hair inspector. So I hit Ctrl Y to get an inspector, hit Ctrl T to make it always stay on top, and I move it over here in the corner. 
because I think that's a nice place for it. Okay, let me quickly connect the transform to the quad and connect the circular spread to the transform. Let me scale down the X and let me scale down the Y. And let's lower the spread count to five. So we got five quads in a circle. What I'm going to show you is how to find out if the quads are above a certain baseline. So let's make that baseline first. I'm just gonna select the quad and the transform, hit Ctrl D to duplicate them. Uh, right click to lose my connection. And I'm gonna connect the quad to the group. I'm gonna make the X scale two and the Y scale something low, 0.2 will do. And because the, the line is above the quads, I'm gonna lower the transparency. So I'm gonna make a note, set alpha, alpha color. And it's now set to black. So if I right click and drag up, I can saturate it, make it white. And then I connect it to the quad. And I'm gonna lower the alpha value and I think 0.2 will do just fine. And now I got five quads in a circle and a baseline. Okay, for the circular spread, if I lower the vector pin, I can get this nice arc shape. And if I now play with the face pin, I can rotate my quads around. Let's uh, put this arc exactly on our baseline. So uh, I think 0.44 will do. And just like in the previous tutorial, I can figure out if a quad is above or below the baseline with the bigger than node, bigger than value. And if I right click on the output and I middle click, I get this IO box toggle. And if I select that one and I go to Hair Inspector and I set the rows to five, I got five toggles. Now let's connect the output Y pin of the circular spread to our bigger than node. Uh, let me scale this up. I now want to color all the quads if any of these quads are above our baseline. So to do that, I need another spectral node. A double left click. Now the Boolean spectral nodes that I'm going to need for this are not in the spectral group, but they're in the Booleans group. But if you just type in spectral, it will filter all the nodes with the name spectral in it. And here you see OR and AND Boolean spectral. Now let's pick the OR Boolean spectral. Let's connect this Boolean spectral to the bigger than node. And don't worry about the bin size, I need to explain bin sizes in later tutorials. The default is minus one and that's perfect. The OR spectral node will output a one if any of these slices are one. So let me change the face pin to below the baseline. And you see now we got zero slices that are bigger than our baseline. So my OR spectral node will output a zero. And if I rotate again, I got three nodes above my baseline and my OR spectral node outputs a one. So let me right click and middle click so you can see the output. Okay, this is cool. Let's make a color switch. I double left click, type in switch, switch color input. And I connect my OR spectral node to the switch. Now I got two white colors. But if you press and hold the control key and then right click and drag up, you can edit some saturation to your color. And now we got a red color and a white color. So it will switch between red and white. Now let's connect this switch to our first quad. And you see now all the quads are red. And if I play with the face pin, they are white. And right about here, when I reach the baseline, all the quads will become red again. How cool is that? So red, and now they're all below, and poof, they're white again. Okay, just for fun, let's uh, move our baseline up or down. I double right click, make an IO box value advanced. And I connect it to the bigger than value, and to the translate Y of my baseline quad. And now I can move my baseline up or down. So if I move my baseline down until it hits a quad, they're all red again. Now, just for fun, let's make the end boolean spectral, end boolean spectral, and connect that to the bigger than sign, and connect the output to the switch, and right click, middle mouse click, to check its status. The end spectral will output a one if all the slices of the spread are a one. So now we will only color our quads if all our quads are above the baseline. 
You see, now we got only one quad above the baseline. And if I change my face pin, and now they're all, all above it, so now they're all red. And if I move my baseline up, I can change all the quads red or white. And if I play with the face pin, the same will happen. Well, that's it for now. I hope you understand a bit the idea behind the spectral node group. And in my next tutorial, I want to talk about the basics of banks, what they are and how and why we use them in VVV. My name is Wes Bam and thanks for watching.